Hi everyone, let's begin with a new section, packing up your toolbox. There are many simple everyday programming skills that every Delphi developer needs to have. Pack your everyday programmer toolbox with everything you will need from simple things such as file I.O. to more complex things such as working with JSON and the parallel programming library. The objective of this section is to become fluent in using a Delphi programmer with everyday useful techniques such as working with files, streams, JSON and XML. We will also look into making your apps faster and more responsive with the Parallel Programming Library, PPL. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with Parallel Programming Library. In this video, we are going to take a look at multi-threaded programming. We will work with parallel loops, tasks and futures. Writing multi-threaded code is considered to be one of the most difficult things in programming. Debugging multi-threaded apps is even more difficult. When an operating system starts an app, it creates an operating process for it. In each process, there could be one or more threads running. Processes that power mobile devices typically have multiple cores. This means that there could be multiple threads executing in parallel on each core. A typical app executes in one thread, which runs on just one processor core. All other cores do nothing. Since the very early versions of Delphi, there is a T-thread class that represents the concept of the operating system thread. PPL provides the concept of T-task, which is more abstract than a thread and makes it easier to write multi-threaded code. The very first thing to do in order to use PPL is to add a system.threading unit to the uses clause of your program. Instead of creating threads directly, the library maintains on behalf of the app a self-tuning pool of threads that are used to execute tasks. Tasks can be easily synchronized. There are methods to wait for any or all tasks to complete. The most easy concept to grasp in the PPL is a parallel for loop. This is useful when calculations for different values of a control variable are independent and it is not important in which order they are executed. A good example of this use case comes from the ray tracing algorithm used in computer graphics. To generate an image, we need to calculate the color of each pixel that makes up the resulting image. This is done by calculating the path of each ray of light in space. Calculating the color of a given pixel is completely independent from other pixels and can be performed simultaneously to generate the resulting bitmap faster. Instead of implementing a ray tracer here, Let's create a really simple demo that would allow us to observe how much faster a parallel loop would execute as compared to a traditional loop. Instead of calculating pixel colors in each iteration of the loop, we will just call sleep procedure that will make the current thread sleep for a given amount of milliseconds and then it will continue to run. So let's start. Create a new multi-device project in Delphi. Drop two buttons on the form. You can open IDE Insight in our search and use the shortcut. Change the name and text property of the button 1 to BTN for loop parallel and parallel for loop respectively. Also change its alignment. Change the event to on click. Click on the button which will take you to the code. Again I will go to the design tab and click on the second button. Again, change the name of the property to btn for loop regular and its text to loop for regular. Also, we will change its alignment to most of and event will be btn for loop regular click. Double click on loop for regular and this will take you to your code. Add code to this file. Below private method, we will add this code. For calculating the elapsed time, we are using the t-stopwatch record type from system.diagnostics unit. The t-parallel.4 method has a lot of overloaded versions. In this example, it takes the starting index, ending index, and an anonymous procedure that takes an integer parameter as an index. Depending on the number of cores in your device, you will see that the regular loop executes in more than a second and the parallel loop executes roughly as much faster as the number of cores available to your app. 
One of the key use cases for multi-threading code is to keep the user interface responsive while performing some long-running operation, such as downloading data from the internet or performing calculations. The main thread of the application, the one when the user interface runs, should not be busy with those time-consuming operations. They should be executed in the background thread to keep the user interface responsive. Add two more buttons to the form. Go to Design tab. Here we will add two more buttons, and we will enter the code to our on-click events. Change the name property of button 3 of the application form to BTN non-responsive and text property to non-responsive, alignment to most top. Go to events tab and change this to BTN non-responsive click. Add code to on click. Change button 4 to BTN responsive 1 and text property to responsive 1. Also change the alignment to most top. Change its event to on click and enter BTN responsive 1 click. Then we click on on click which will take us to the code for that button. Add the code there. We will add one more button. Change this name to BTN responsive 2. Text property to responsive 2. Change the alignment to most top. Go to the events tab and change the on click to BTN responsive 2 click. When we click on the event, the code is opened, and here we will add Let's run our application. This is the output. These are our buttons. When you click on the first button, the form freezes for 3 seconds. When you click on the second button, the form stays responsive because a time-consuming operation is executed in a different thread and the main app thread can process user events normally. In fact, the done message is displayed almost immediately because the main thread continues to execute just after it started the task. If you would like to display the done text on the button after the task is complete, you would need to do it from the inside of the background thread. This is the code that displays the done method. You can only manipulate the user interface from the main app thread. That's why the call to change button's text property needs to be synchronized. Now the label changes not immediately, but after three seconds. A task is a bit like an anonymous procedure. You can declare it, but it only starts to execute when it's told to. You need to call start, and only then the task starts. PPL also provides the notion of a future. It is a specialization of a task. It is a task that returns a value. In the case of a task, you call its start method to execute. In the case of a future, you can just declare it and assign it to a variable. When you try to retrieve the value of this variable, then the future is executed in a background thread and the value is returned. There are some interesting use cases when futures are useful. For example, you may want to calculate something based on the values of two or more parameters that need to be calculated first. Instead of calculating these parameters sequentially, we could perform these calculations simultaneously. For example, a management board of some large organization would like to know what the ratio of actual versus planned expenses for the last year is. Calculating both values could be a lengthy process. At the end, you just get two currency values that you want to divide. Let's first have a look at how we could implement this functionality without futures, just by using standard code. I will go to my design form and add two more buttons to this form. Change the name of this property to BTN Future 1 and text property to Without Futures. Also, we can change its height so that the buttons are visible. I will go to Events tab and click on W. Now I will change the name of the property of the next button to BTN Future 2. Text property to With Future. Align to Most Top and Height to 40. Now when I double click on Future 1 button, the code file opens. Let's add our code to this. Run the application. Here, when we click on Without Futures, 
the ratio has to be calculated and we see that it took about 3 seconds. That is what has been expected. The first calculation took 1 second and the second took 2 seconds. Now let's add code to our second button. Save this file and run the application again. The same functionality but this time implemented with futures looks like this. This code executes in about 2 seconds. This is how much the longer of the two calculations takes. Future is a generic class method that belongs to T task type. When you access the value of a future, then the actual calculation takes place and it's happening in the background thread. The calculation of actual and planned values is done in parallel and not consecutively.